Hi everyone, this is the uh, Jupyter and the Python developer meeting for Tuesday, October 13th. And uh, we've got various people traveling. Fernando is either on the way or already in uh, Germany. I'm here in New York, um, as are uh, Stephen Sylvester and David Wilmer, in addition to the usual New York crowd. And uh, yeah, why don't we get started with the uh, agenda on the hackpad? I guess I'm first. Um, yeah, so we've shipped a couple of releases, various bug fix releases, and a, a minor version of Jupyter Client and IPython kernel, which add a few. Um, a few nice things like uh, Sylvan's com info and things like uh, IPython kernel spec list shows the path of everything, which is useful. Um, and then we've just been doing little patch releases of several patches kind of all over the place. That's, I think, one of the, been one of the nice things about the split is we can ship a patch release with a tiny bug. Uh, bug fix without really any, it, it's just nice and easy and we're not, most of the packages aren't in the middle of significant work, so we can just do that and it's no big deal. That's really nice. Um, Matt Rocklin has been working on a new kind of distributed computing um, tool uh, that's kind of, uh, it's based on uh, it's main, it's kind of point is for as a distributed executor for Dask graphs. Um, and that's been an interesting discussion. He has some cool ideas on that one. Um, I've been spending a lot of time trying to keep track of issues, but it's really hard <laughs> um, because we have roughly, um, we've had roughly 200 uh, new issues and pull requests opened in the last week. Um, we've closed about half of them. So we're doing pretty well on that. Um, but still, that's just classifying stuff. I know Matthias pointed out how many recent issues we had that had no comments and stuff, but those are only the ones that we don't get to. There are an awful lot that we get to. Um, yeah. Um, really to the release stuff, I think it, we're, we started a conversation or someone started a conversation about what, what do we need to get a release of traitlets? Um, I think we're probably pretty close to at least a beta for that one with the new APIs, which look, look pretty good. Um, I've also been playing with binder, um, and building, um, Docker files and stuff for some of the research software here or called Phoenix, which is finite element simulation stuff, uh, which is particularly challenging to build. <laughs> you need special versions of Petsy and Swig and, uh, and a bunch of uh, pretty heavy duty uh, libraries. So a combination of Docker and Conda and stuff. Um, and I've got a, a binder working for that and also notebooks generated for some of the, from some of the Open Dream Kit work that's taking restructured text docs and um, automatically turning them into notebooks with stuff, which is going okay. Um, there are a lot of things to really like about Pandoc. Um, I think that a lot of what we would do with NB Convert would off, often be done better if we basically implemented NB Convert as Pandoc filters. Um, that would obviously make a Pandoc a hard dependency, which I think we're probably not comfortable doing at any point. But a lot of NB convert would actually work a lot better, including this restructured text heading problem that we have um, would not be an issue if we were doing it that way. Um, so I might I might explore an alternate NB convert that's really just Pandoc filters and writers. Uh, which I think would be an awful lot cleaner than what we have right now, even if it means not doing the whole thing in Python. 
Um, and the last thing I have is there's been a lot, a lot of activity uh, for whatever reason on the Docker file and the notebook repo, um, which I wasn't super concerned about because they, we just kind of plopped it in there and it wasn't exactly for anything. It was just a, a most a really basic installation of uh, the notebook package and like Python kernel and that's it. But people have been contributing packages, you know, aggressively optimizing the size of the image um, and things like that. And I don't, I don't know exactly what this Docker file is for, so I don't know um, how to make proper answers to some of these PRs. Um, I've mostly been letting them in because I don't, because whatever. But I think they've they've been um, doing a lot of work, and I don't want them to. <coughs> be wasting their time if we're just going to say, oh, maybe we shouldn't even have a Docker file here. Um, so starting a conversation on the list or something about what we should be doing with respect to the kind of basic Docker notebook um, baseline. Yeah. And that's, I think that's me, unless I forgot stuff. Um, we did we didn't have the meeting last week. Did you have things from last week to report? I uh, that yeah, I covered okay. the last couple of weeks. I think so I probably forgot some stuff, but that's the important bits. Okay. I was traveling for the last two weeks, so nothing, nothing really important to to report. So nothing directly related to IPython and Jupyter. But so I think I'm I'm next then. Um, so this week and last week, I've been kind of working on the notebook, mostly just front end things, um, bug fixes and responding to issues and uh, helping people with problems that they were having. Um, the week before last, which we didn't have a meeting, when I was in New York, I got to work with the guys at O'Reilly. Uh, specifically, I worked a lot with Zach on upgrading Thebe to the notebook 4.0. Um, and we got that done while I was there. So that was good. Um, this week, I'm uh, planning on continuing my uh, work on the notebook, trying to help close those 200 issues and work on PRs and whatnot. Um, also, I'm going to continue working on decoupling the widgets. Uh, the work that I did to decouple the manager got merged. So I'm going to now work on decoupling the individual widgets themselves from the notebook. And also, I received all my gear from O'Reilly so I can start doing um, the video class work that I'm going to be doing, my, my second job or my, my afternoon job. So that will be fun. And that's it for me. Very good. I think the IBM guys are next. IBM guys. Hey, it's Pete. I guess I'll talk for us. But uh, sorry about the hack pet there. Something crazy's going on with uh, the formatting yeah. and things reappearing. I, I don't. <laughs> uh, I don't know if I'm just seeing it or if anyone else is. But anyways. Um, our status, I think Dan's on the phone, but I know he's been talking with you, Brian, about, you know, the, the Jupiter Day, Jupiter Hackathon, whatever it's called, on the 24th. Um, Code-wise, we dropped uh, uh, or seeded the uh, Kernel Gateway uh, project over in the incubator with the Python-based gateway impl. So this is just pulling together Jupiter client and uh, pieces of Jupiter notebook and uh, you know basically creating a headless uh, way of provisioning kernels right it's it's a reference implementation just using what exists not reinventing the wheel so just trying to drive something in there quickly that meets some you know bare bones uh, requirements to build some proof of concepts around so you know we could see where to take it next and then uh, uh gino put something in here about the widgets but it's now gone because of the hackpad craziness so you on gino you want to talk or Maybe Gino's not there. Okay. Uh, it, basically, there's an issue with the uh, declarative widgets working in Safari and Firefox that uh, he's been tracking down. So 
I think we've got a solution or an air solution on that, but uh, you know, that's been occupying some time. Uh, I think last week we had some more status in there, but now <laughs> with the hackpad and disarray, uh, I'm trying to find it. But uh, I think last week we just had a few things about uh, we pushed out some more example notebooks and tutorials around the dashboards and uh, widgets. One in particular that uh, might be worth looking at was uh, a dashboard that combined in like a nice tutorial notebook, uh, a WebGL globe demo from Polymer, a Spark stream, and, uh, you know, connected up to meetups.com. So it kind of shows like how the back end can be streaming data to the front end. The widgets can be reacting to it in real time. And you could even pull in, you know, something as crazy as a WebGL globe right into the notebook canvas. So it's, it's a tech buffet, but it's also, we wrote it up as a uh, tutorial. So there's a good amount of markdown comments and whatnot in it. So check it out. I think, I think that's it from us. Oh, is uh, Jeremy or uh, Andrew on? Yes. Uh, oh, sorry. Oops. Oh, hi. Sorry. Nice. Um, yeah, so I don't really have too much to report. I've been pretty busy doing research stuff, but um, I took a little bit of time last week to uh, create this little utility called Plot Checker. It's not really directly related to Jupyter stuff, but it um, kind of goes hand in hand with MB Grader. Um, the basic idea is like if you want to be able to grade your students' plots um, in a more automatic way, uh, then Plot Checker can help you do that. Great. How about uh, Jeremy or Andrew? I don't see them connected. Okay. Um, I, I, I know. Yeah. Nope. Go for it. Talk yeah. All right. Awesome. Um, so this week, I've mostly been working on some binder stuff, um, taking some of the discussion that was happening in New York um, week before last and putting it all into um, a Swagger API spec. Um, then I've just got um, an open PR on the binder registry. Um, updates from last week. Um, I think it was just some stuff on the notebook, um, working on some stuff for version 020 of temp and B, um, talking to a local university about space um, this week, and also um, funding from Braintree for food for Jupiter Day in Chicago. Um, next week, I'm at Grace Hopper um, all week. So we'll be giving a talk on Project Jupiter there and also helping out with Open Source Day and hopefully getting some new contributors set up on the project. And that's all. Fantastic. Um, mostly small fixes to Jupyter Data Services documentation testing. Um, I work on the, the bulk large upload issue on the, the notebook that tree view and a little more discussion. I think that our way of sending the baseline log is not going to be on the log. We're going to on the I don't know if I'm the only one, but I have like zero audio. I don't hear you. I mean, it's really far. Yeah, if, if you could turn up the mic sensitivity, that would be great. Because like, yes. okay, someone, I so, someone right microphone oh, is doing sorry. a lot of wind I, noise. Oh, he changed it to one sec. The mic. Oh, it's right here. Yes. You hear me now? Slightly better, yeah. Much better. All right, so most of the past couple of weeks have been trying to clean up and finish Jupyter JS services, but better documentation. Um, this week we noticed a, a, a bit of a problem with the life cycle handling of the kernel object itself. We're trying to clean up. Um, also, stepping a little bit on the, the notebook, um, some, some issues and documentation there. 
and uh, helping Dave out. He'll talk about some things we're doing with phosphide and in terms of packaging and uh, uh, plug-in systems. That's it. Yeah, like Steve said, we're um, we're basically trying to get some issues open. Uh, see our thoughts and, and the discussions about the packaging deployment um, and definition of uh, plugins uh, inside Phosphor. Um, so we're doing that inside the phosphide um, repo. Uh, we've opened one for <coughs> sorry. Uh, we've opened one for the for the packaging so far. Um, had some good comments already. Um, we're just about to open a second one for definition of plugins. Um, which Steve is uh, Steve is looking over now, and I think we'll, we'll put in this afternoon um, early on, um, and then we're going to start looking at putting together a sort of prototype proof of concept with all of these uh, sort of initial ideas. Um, none of this is concrete, and we're sort of looking for input from everyone for this. Really, uh, pretty much it. Right. So I've been um, uh, so last week we were all out uh, recovering a bit from Strata, where Jason and I gave a talk. Um, after that, I uh, started working on um, supporting uh, international, so supporting keyboard shortcuts that work on across all keyboards. Um, so there's uh, been the mailing list issues about um, supporting the DOM3 dot key property on a key down event, uh, which actually gives us character based uh, key presses rather than key code based key presses. Um, so we're discussing that and the semantics of that, uh, working on the implementation now in the feature branch in Phosphor Keymap. Uh, so basically, the, the hopeful outcome of this is on browsers that support the, dot, the DOM3 standard, which right now is IE and Firefox. Uh, the shortcuts will work as advertised across any keyboard layout uh, for, uh, for Chrome until Chrome finishes implementing the spec. Uh, we just have to assume a US keyboard layout and map from key codes to their US key based, key character based counterpart. Um, and that's just where we live in for that. So, but hopefully, um, the uh, the Chrome feature implementation for that was really was promoted from uh, testing to experimental recently. Uh, so, hopefully, in the next few months, that'll actually hit mainline Chrome. We'll be able to use it across all browsers. Uh, in addition to that, I've been participating in the discussions on the Phosphide plugins packaging uh, uh, conversations here in New York, uh, contributing to those uh, discussions. Uh, again, as Dave mentioned, uh, those will be Phosphide issue number one is already open for comments. Uh, phosphide issue number two will be uh, open later this afternoon for additional comments. So feel free to um, uh, give us your opinion and relay any other anecdotal evidence uh, or experience that you have uh, in, this, uh, in this space on those issues. Uh, that's what they're for. Uh, final point, uh, last week I fixed the uh, long-standing scroll jitterbug on the notebook. Uh, that was actually a patch that I submitted uh, and got merged in Code Mirror. Um, and so Basically, if you're running on Trunk now, uh, you should no longer see the scroll issue uh, OS X trackpad, trackpad song. All right. Uh, so, yes, uh, hi everyone. So, last week we open sourced a uh, widget library based on API widgets called VP Plot. So, it's a lightweight plotting library uh, that entirely relies on API widgets for the communication with uh, between the Python and the JavaScript. Uh, we've got a lot of attention around this uh, release, uh, and I spent a lot, a lot of time this week uh, fixing the pain points of people trying to install it, etc. So, uh, yeah, that was a pretty nice uh, thing. Uh, ob ob obvious, um, hopefully, we'll be uh, able to open source more in the next weeks because we have a couple of other packages which are related to Wikiplot that we have not yet open sourced. Uh, I also opened a trade type incubator proposal. Uh, um, anyone willing to comment on it uh, is welcome to comment on the issue on the incubator proposal with the repository. Uh, so the idea is to create, uh, to, to have a reference implementation for NumPy array, uh, Pandas data frame, and X ray trade types. Um, uh, besides that, I worked a bit on the the new Trapez API and uh, had PR uh, numbers in the IPI widget repository for the code. Great. Right. My, my head cuts dead. Who's next? Right. I am. Yes. So, uh, uh, BQ plot work, like Sylvan mentioned, reviewing stuff with 4.1 for notebook with Brian and, and uh, uh, Jonathan. Uh, we gave our strata talk. Matthias asked if there will be videos. Uh, we do. I think we do have permission to post our video up on YouTube, and I believe we can download them. But 
I haven't checked yet. So provided Chris is okay with it, I'm okay with it. You know, we, I'm, I'm happy to put the video up on YouTube if we can get a hold of it. Um, and then participating in all the discussions here in New York about keyboard handling and the kernel uh, JavaScript and things like that. Is Nick around? I am. Sorry, I was on mute. Um, hi. Nick. So, just, hello. Um, so the baby's been sick, so that's been you know kind of bad for productivity. Um, <clears throat> Uh, and I was on travel, but um, I have been taking care of some little things on uh, NB Viewer. Um, I think we, uh, I think we've resolved the encoding stuff where we're just gonna, we're gonna trust that the internet works properly and uh, just assume that if you don't tell us you're serving to us, we're gonna say it's UTF-8 um, instead of Latin one. And so it's probably right for everything except for IIS anyway. Um, and then we're again working on the slides, getting them back to where they match the expectations that come straight out of NB Convert. Uh, we're doing that with um, a new custom template path, which I think will actually be really nice if people want to be adding their own um, formats. It'll that's actually a much cleaner way to do it than what we were doing before. So I'm pretty pretty happy about that. Um, I had somebody reach out to me from sort of more of a day job angle uh, from. Uh, the Sticks working group, which is part of Oasis, and uh, they're interested in having a more developer-focused thing for their language for defining cyber threats. And so there's a fun little notebook linked in the hackpad that uses a bunch of notebook technologies to, you know, get to kind of an interesting place away from giant, horrible XML schemata. Um, and then it uh, looks like some conversations have been started up again about uh, how do I advertise my widgets and how do I how do I find widgets, find what they look like, find what they work with. Um, so maybe it's time to open back up the discussion about the jupiter.org slash kernels and or jupiter.org slash widgets and kind of have a standardized approach for getting people to get their, you know, basically marketing material for their packages into there because um, they don't really fit into their native package manager marketing sites registries so well i think um so definitely interested in some feedback there on how someone that maintains a package would want to market it on jupiter.org um that's about it and continuum stuff all right so i guess kapal is up next um, sorry I couldn't make last week's meeting. I had a bunch of design stuff for a bunch of my classes on campus here at Cal Poly, so I wasn't really, I didn't have a lot of updates last week. And so this week I have made the Meetup logo for Jupiter Day, and I'm starting to work on some marketing material that we can start advertising and using for those meetups wherever they'll be. And I made it pretty customizable for whatever location we're going to be meeting up at. Um, just minimal things coming up on GitHub, small changes to both the website and little design critiques that I've been putting my input on. Still have to catch up with some of them. And I pretty much finished the Jupyter convention banner that we will use wherever we go. Wish we had that earlier, but um, going to get some screenshots. If you guys have some good thing, like things to represent on the banner that we can put on there of the notebook, so visual something that's appealing to the eye. And I don't know, in one of my classes this week, I started using the Jupyter Notebook, so I'm starting to get a little more, I don't know, a little more context with what I'm designing, which it's helping me a lot more. Um, and yeah, so that's very good. And that's pretty much my, if anyone has anything designed, just shoot it over to me and I'm looking to go forward. So, Katie's next. Cool. Um... Yeah, I was not at the meeting last week either because I was sick, and so that's how I've also been hindered productivity. But um, since we met last, uh, I've just been, I finished the newsletter, and so y'all will probably see that go up on GitHub, and you know, you'll be able to give me feedback on that pretty soon. And then, so I'll send it to Brian first. 
And then I've been working on some plans for Jupiter Day and just some marketing content to send out to people before that happens so we can get as many people as possible and track to all the folks. And then also, I guess I'm going to be working on finding a venue for the one in New York City because that remains to be seen. And so that'll be what I'm going to be doing. Are there any questions around this? Questions? <laughs> no. Right. Oh, right. Also, the code of conduct hasn't gone up yet. I sent it to Brian a while ago, but it just needs to um, be, you know, finalized to go up on uh, GitHub so y'all can see it and then, you know, give feedback on that too. But that'll be going up pretty soon. That's Great. Pretty much yeah. Cool. Damia? Yeah. Do you hear me? Yeah. Hi. Okay. Well, essentially, um, I, I was uh, reviewing some PRs in several repos, uh, mainly in the notebook and then the MV Convert one and a little bit in the MV Weaver. Um, I was also dealing with some issues at Rise uh, because I have periodic <laughs> periodic rise of issues, I guess. Probably is related with uh, people using yeah. using it uh, at conference, and there is a lot of uh, activity also in the IPython country uh, organization. So uh, there there are new and exciting enhancement and and the extensions there, uh, and I am part of that organization, so I have to check those. Uh, too, and um, that's and then uh, continue work. That's pretty much all the things I uh, have done. I guess I'm the last person. My uh, hackpad is not behaving for me right now, so I won't uh, write anything right now. I can, I can do that after we get off. So I've been here in New York for two weeks. First week was Strata followed by a uh, computing and journalism uh, workshop at Columbia. It was very interesting. And then uh, last week, uh, myself, Chris, Jason, and Sylvan were working together at the Sloan Foundation. And uh, we spent quite a bit of time uh, working on various issues uh, related to the 4.1 release of the notebook that's coming up. Um, did some issue triage on that. Uh, we spent quite a bit of time uh, sort of auditing the way that we're naming uh, actions or commands in the notebook. And so I have a pull request uh, open on that. Uh, I've gotten great feedback from everyone and we'll be trying to finishing or trying to finish that up uh, here in the next day or so. Um, I've also been working with John some uh, to clean up the uh, design of the multiple cell selection. Uh, the, the, the version that's in master right now, I, I don't think, uh, I, I think it has some, some problems that we need to fix before 4.1 goes out. And I, I think John and I mostly have that worked out. It, it's a matter of, uh, finishing, uh, the review on his e existing PR and then, uh, following that up with another PR, uh, after that. It, I, I think it shouldn't be a problem to get into 4.1 though. Um, I've been having a lot of design discussions uh, here in New York about uh, keyboard shortcuts, as Chris mentioned. Uh, that was a lot last week and then some this week. Uh, I think that those discussions are mostly winding down and, and uh, shifting over to, to Chris implementing them. Um, since uh, Stephen and David got here yesterday, we've been talking more about uh, the plan for going from the node uh, common JS packages that we're writing for JavaScript and loading those into the browser. And uh, they have this uh, issue open on the phosphide repo in Phosphor to discuss that. And, and our, our goal is to come up with a common uh, solution that works for phosphide and Phosphor in general, but also for Jupyter. And so we really would love input uh, from anyone and everyone who has uh, thoughts on that. Um, the uh, next thing, uh, sort of post 4.1 that I plan on working on, 
is uh, something that I think we're going to need in a lot of our models in the, the uh, new JavaScript uh, we're writing, namely uh, a list that uh, has signals attached to it that can notify uh, others of changes. Uh, we're calling this an observable list, and we have a, a foster repo that's been created, and I'll be uh, impl implementing that there. And the, the two main sources of inspiration for that are going to be, uh, one, the Google Real-Time uh, API itself has uh, an object called a collaborative list. Um, and I think the design of this is going to very closely follow that. Um, and then in addition, uh, some of the spelling of the API uh, will follow uh, other things in Phosphor. Uh, for example, the uh, widget class has various methods for man managing children, and I'll, I'll try to do it in a way that's consistent with those ideas as well. And uh, I've been having a lot of good meetings with people here in New York. Um, one exciting thing is that uh, just today, Google released something called Data Lab. This is a, a Docker-based uh, deployment of uh, a customized Jupyter Notebook that can be run in the Google Cloud and which connects to the Google backend infrastructure, uh, such as BigQuery and so on. Uh, all the code is uh, open source, uh, Apache licensed, and uh, they, they've done a, a really nice job at uh, taking our infrastructure, but then also customizing the UI on top of that. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I encourage folks to have a look at that. Um, we have a, a fantastic set of speakers for the uh, Jupiter Day in New York, which is the 24th of October. We're, uh, it looks like we are going to uh, do uh, the physical space uh, at IBM, although there's still some final details to work out with that. Uh, it won't be as big as we originally hoped, but it will be something, um, and it should should be a very good uh, lineup of speakers. Um, I'll be working with Katie and Dan and, and other people here in the city to uh, uh, promote this and, and finish getting it organized. And I, I think that's all I have for now. Um, is there a website with uh, info for Jupiter Day in New York? Not uh, yet. Not yet. Okay. Yeah, we, we, we'll, we will be doing that very soon. Maybe like it's, it's in like 10 days. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, it, it's a... Uh, Turns out finding uh, physical space in New York City is uh, a little challenging. So, <laughs> I mean, if if you make a website and say that you don't have a place yet, maybe you have people that will uh, come in and say, "Hey, you can come there." Um, I don't know. Yeah, but yeah, we're, we're going to move forward on that pretty quickly now. Um, but yeah, so we're getting a lot done here, and uh, and. Uh, I think okay. that Nick Nick is proposing that you would you could rent a big Airbnb just for Jupiter Day on chat. <laughs> that would be a big one. We we were originally thinking of having two hundred people, so uh <laughs> two hundred square meter is enough, right? Right? One square meter per person, right? Totally abundant. Um so I, I, any other things that, that people wanted to bring up before we uh, end the meeting? Oh, M Matthias, do you want to update? You were at uh, the GitHub Universe? Um, yeah, it was it was not particularly related to IPython. It was it, it was a nice nice tech event in in general, but um, our fan was not there. I. Uh, so the um, team clam I discussed a bit on how um, they manage cross repository things and and they manage huge, huge team and um, like because uh, team clam is more and more in a manager position, um, which was interesting but difficult to to sum up in 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 a few minutes. Um, nice nice new features that are coming up in GitHub, 
like the distributed uh, USB key that allow you to do um, two-factor authentication, and, and of course free T-shirts, which is always always nice when you're at conferences. Um, but not nothing that that um, is worth mentioning right now. All right. Oh, I did remember a thing that I did in the last week or two. Um, this was talked about on the list, but um, I bugged uh, GitHub again about issue migration, and they pointed me to a new um, in-development API called Issue Importing, the principal uh, features of which are they do not produce email notifications, and um, they can preserve the issue com uh, comment issue and comment created date. So with a single request, you can create an issue with comments and everything has the correct, the original dates um, and nobody and, gets an email about it. An issue author? Yeah. Comments author? Uh, no, it doesn't, it doesn't preserve the author. So, um, so I've, I've updated the migration script and I've done some testing with it. I've even migrated a couple small issues um, in our repos for to, to test it out a little bit. Um, so I add to the comment a ping of the author, but they don't get an email about that. That doesn't cause an email, but it does cause an issue subscription. Um, and then link back to the original and close the original. So I, th I think issue migration might be viable now so do, when it wasn't do, before do, when I first wrote the script. Do we want to write uh, GitHub both that we can ping, like migrate there, and it does that for us instead of running things on the command line. Yeah, if if we actually decide, I I'll, I can put that start putting that together if we actually think that this is something that we want to do. I can okay. do that easy enough. Okay. I I have one other thing. Uh, I I don't remember. I visited some GitHub repo last week and saw that they were using uh, something called Zen Hub. And I've been playing around with it. It's, it's similar to waffle.io, uh, but you can have boards that span multiple repos and the columns in the boards uh, are not labels. And so there's a, a bit more flexibility for sort of GitHub based project management than I've seen before. The other thing that I really like is they have uh, voting on issues. And uh, have, have you have a look at uh, Code Tree? I can send you the link, which also yeah. seems. Okay. Yeah, that, that that would be great. I'm right now. I'm just playing with it a little bit, but if other people want to play with these things and see if they make sense, that would be great. All right. Yeah. Yeah, worth a try. Well, Waffle didn't didn't fit well, but worth trying new things. Yep. Well, unless there's anything else, I think we shall call the meeting. Hope everyone okay. has a good next week and uh yeah. Bye-bye. Have fun in New York. Bye. Thank you.